God chose a man named Abram, who was later called Abraham. God, oh. Oh, hey guys, sorry. I was just reading one of my favorite books. It's Harry Potter. I love this book. I have read it so many times and I always learn something new about the characters and what happened. Hmm. You know, this reminds me of another book. Can you guys shout out what book this makes you think of? For those of you that guessed the Bible, you would be right. You can read the Bible like 100,000 times and you would learn something new every time. Isn't that crazy cool? Hebrews 14.2 says, for the word of God is alive and powerful. It is sharper than any two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. I was reading in my Bible earlier today about this person named Abram. But before we get into that story, don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out our other fun videos. All month long, We've been talking about love as we've looked at the very beginning of God's epic love story. The first book in the Bible is called Genesis. We can read in Genesis how God created everything in the world. Like, everything. <laughs> everything God made was good. And God did it all out of love. God made the sky, land, and sea, and all the fish, animals, and birds. God also created people, Adam and Eve. But you know, we talked about last week how Adam and Eve didn't trust God. They turned away from God and broke the loving rule God had given them. Sin entered the world and people no longer had a perfect relationship with God or each other. Adam and Eve's family grew and people began to fill the earth, but almost no one followed God. The earth was filled of violence and hateful acts by people. There was one man, however, who followed God faithfully, a man named Noah. God asked Noah to build a huge boat. God instructed Noah to bring two of each kind of animal aboard the boat, along with his family. God sent a great flood that covered the earth for 40 days. And when the waters finally went back down, Noah and his family returned to dry land. God set a rainbow in the sky and promised to never flood the earth again. Life began to spring up again throughout the land. Noah's family grew and once more, people filled the earth. But once again, most of them were selfish. Sadly, they chose not to follow God. In the midst of all of this, God still had a plan to show love to all people. God chose a man named Abram, who was later called Abraham. God called Abram to be a blessing to the world. Let's read what God said to Abram. It's written down in Genesis chapter 12. The Lord had said to Abram, go from your country, your people, and your father's family. Go to the land I show you. I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing to others. I will bless those who bless you. I will put a curse on anyone who puts a curse on you. All nations on the earth will be blessed because of you. Wow, now that's an amazing promise. Have you guys ever made a promise? Meaning that you said you would do something and actually did it? Like, I promised my mom that I would clean my room today. And then I did it. It took me a while, but I still kept my promise and cleaned my whole room. Well, God's promises are amazing because they are bigger and better. And he always comes through when he says he will do something. And if you think about it, it was a pretty wild thing for Abram to do. Leave his home, his country, and everyone he knew. I wonder what that was like for Abram and his wife, Sarai. It was probably really hard for Abram and his wife Sarai, but they continued to trust in God through the whole situation, and they glorified God the whole time. You know, when I was in sixth grade, I moved soccer teams because my coach left, and everyone
everybody had to find a new team. It was really hard because I didn't know anyone. So I had to make all new friends while earning a spot on the team. I really like to meet new people, but this was hard for me to do both through this whole process. Though I continue to trust in God. And guess what? I made the soccer team. And now, 10 years later, I'm still friends with a lot of those girls. And some of those girls came to know Christ because I continue to trust in God and show His faith to them. It's amazing to think how God has always had a big plan to show love to the world. God told Abram to take his family and to go to a new land. Abram and Sarai went even though they didn't know exactly what God had in store. They trusted God's promise to bless the whole world through their family. We can see God's plan as we look all throughout the Bible. We can see how God's promise came true over the course of history. We can see how God sent Jesus many years later to be our savior. Jesus himself was part of Abram and Sarai's family. And we can be a part of God's plan today as we share God's love with others, with our words and with our actions. Remember, God has a plan to show love to the world. How exciting is that? You and I get to participate in God's plan. It's really cool thinking that we can see today that we know God's promise to Abram came true. Over many, many years, Abram's family grew into the nation of Israel. And many years later, Jesus was born into that family. Jesus fulfilled God's plan to love and bless the whole world. And God's plan didn't stop there because Jesus came to earth and gave his life for us. He made a way for anyone who believes in him to be a part of the family of God. Abram's family is still growing as more and more people believe in Jesus and share God's love with the world. Right here and now, we can believe that God still has a plan to show love. We can be a part of God's plan by sharing God's love with others. And no matter what we're going through or what the world is going through, we can know that God will one day make things right. That really helps me when there are things that I don't understand. It reminds me that God loves me no matter what. I can trust God no matter what. You know, it's kind of like math. I don't understand everything in math, but I trust that my math book can help me find the right answer. Just like we can trust that the Bible and praying to God can help us find the right answer. All it takes is trust. There are two ways that you can do this this week. One, read your Bible. Let's take a look at this month's memory verse. Here is what love is. It is not that we love God. It is that he loved us and sent his son to give his life to pay for our sins. 1 John 4.10. Man, this week you could even try to read more of John. I would love to hear what you learned from it. Now, number two is share with a friend about your faith and how God is helping you. Now, let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you so much that we were able to learn about you and your promises. God, I pray that we would continue to trust in you. And in your name we pray, amen. And don't forget this week that we have in-person ministry for you and your whole family on Wednesday nights at 6.30 and Sunday mornings at 9 and 11. And also like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out our other fun videos. Now I'm gonna go finish reading my book, but I will see you guys next time.